Hello, hello. Happy, happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving, Xavier. Fabricio, happy Thanksgiving. Feliz Dia del Chumpipoyo. Hi, good evening. Good evening, good evening. I think that's how you spell it, Chumpipoyo. Feliz Dia del Chumpipoyo. Welcome. Welcome, welcome, everybody. Bienvenidos, bienvenidos. Hello, hello. Welcome to Friday, everybody. Welcome to Friday. Some people say that Thursday is their little Friday. For us, Thursday is our Friday. Because Friday we have off, Saturday we have off, Sunday we have off. Long weekend for us all the time. Hello, hello. Welcome, welcome. Bienvenidos. ¿Qué tal? Did anybody get to eat turkey today? No turkey? Yes, turkey. Hello, hello. hello. Turkey. Yes. No turkey. <laughs> or no. So no some, some red beans. Some regular, very good, very good beans. <laughs> very good. Very good beans. Alex, you know I was reading... I was reading something about beans and right. I don't know if you've ever noticed that in countries that are like more developed, they don't eat as many variety of beans as we do. You know, we have everything. We have red beans, we have white beans, we have black beans, we have, you know, we have a whole bunch of beans, man. We yeah. even have my grandma call, my grandma called me the other day and she said, Do you want some monkey beans? Monkey. And I was like, Los monitos. And I was like, What is that, grandma? And she said, Well, it's beans, but they're really small. And then so when she brought them, they were like really small, mm. man. I was like, I had never seen those before. Y las chilipucas. How about the right. chilipucas? Right? Right? We we the those are white, white, white beans, right? White and they're really big, man. Big be, chilipucas. Yeah. And so I was reading that beans, there's, there's a really large number of beans that are yeah. not made for human consumption. And so that's mm -hmm. why when you go to the United States, you don't see that many beans as options or, or if you guys go to Europe, you know, it's, it's very rare to find beans or they're very specific. Um, yeah. No como nosotros, any type yeah. of bean, que se nos pone. Every day. Compadre, that's what I do. <laughs> Yeah. Black beans today, red beans tomorrow. <laughs> um, so yeah. that was very interesting because, you know, we eat a lot of beans. It's, it's, it's a really big portion of our diet. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, but no, it's good. It's yeah. a, got a lot of iron, right? Right, right. That's what they say. That's what they say. Now, I think oh, that no. the reason we have to boil them and that they were saying yeah. how on the, you know how the bean is covered with a little... Uh, yeah, no. with a little peel, no sé cómo, mm -hmm. cómo sí, verdad, el, el yeah, peel. Mm -hmm. And so they say that that one can be really bad for your stomach and for your digestive system if it's not cooked well. Right. So, so I think it has right. something to do with that. Well, you know, enough about that. It made me hungry. Welcome everybody. <laughs> Bienvenidos. Happy Thanksgiving for those who you know who follow it in any way or form. Buena, buena, buenas. ¿Qué tal? Eh, van a ver que voy a apagar mi cámara de vez en cuando y eso lo voy a hacer porque tengo un pan con chompipollo aquí a la par, entonces para que, no, no, les dé, nice. para que no les dé ahí ganas de echarse una mordidita, de repente uh -huh. van a sentir que ¡pum! me voy a desaparecer. Así que ojo con eso, ojo, ojo con eso. All right, everybody. Uh -huh. uh, really excited about today. I have something that I think you guys are going to, we're going to start doing something 
that I believe you guys are going to enjoy. Um, remember that this class is all about you feeling comfortable. If you mm. feel comfortable, then I, I wish for you guys to try and practice with us, with me, or maybe with, with, uh, with another peer. Um, the reason I, I'm telling you this is because today we begin some activities in which I want to do a little bit of role plays. And so at the very beginning of this, of today, what I want to do is for us to read a role play and then kind of voice it out so that we can hear each other. And maybe I can help you with some pronunciation because today, ladies and gentlemen, we start pronunciation. Today we start conversating. And I want to make sure that you guys uh, can get the practice that you need. If you need it, if you want it, that's it, right? Um, yeah, that's nice. A la fuerza ni los zapatos. A la fuerza <laughs> ni este chumpipollo que me estoy quebrando. Nah, entonces, <laughs> le voy a dar share screen para que comiencen a ver. Mm. And for the, for the rest of the classmates that are joining, welcome, welcome. Welcome to class. We're barely getting started. And so... Great job on the midterm yesterday. I think the majority of us were able to kind of see it, work it through. And I believe that you guys were able to complete it. Is that correct? Are you guys, are you guys okay with the midterm? Yes, we completed already. Nice, nice. If you, for whatever reason, you guys need any help, please remember that there's the WhatsApp and you guys can send a message in the WhatsApp. So don't hesitate. Let me see here. All right. So let's go to our pages. And who remembers what was the last thing we saw? You guys recall? It was really brief, and then we went into the midterm, but we did manage to cover a little bit of it. And it was the relative clauses. It was 3.3. And then you have the knowledge check, 3.4, the lesson objective, 3.5, and then you start with the carnival, lesson objective again. Quick story about the wedding day. And then, ladies and gentlemen, in 3.10, we get pronunciation and stress rhythm. So that is where we're at. We're going to start off with pronunciation all at once. And if we complete it, then we're going to have time for some exercises all the way towards the end. And so we're going to kind of, we're going to, well, we're not going to skip on the reading exercise. We're going to leave it for last if we are able to do it, right? Uh, if we do have enough time. All right. So starting off, as you guys can see, just to make sure I, you know, I, I, I point it out. Pronunciation starts in 3.10. And the focus of the lesson is stress, is stress and rhythm. And so that means that the lesson objective, the adverbial, and then the knowledge check should fall into the same categories or into the same lessons. Um, if we can, I'll, I'll touch up on adverbial clauses, even though I think we already saw a few things or a few items that have to do with adverbial clauses. But if we are not able to cover this one, then we're going to, you know, we're going to cover it on Monday and then complete three on Monday and then jump into section number four. All right. So let's start it off like that. Pronunciation. I think I think I talked to you guys at the very beginning on day one or day two. I talked to you guys about pronunciation and I want you guys to uh, remember the stress and the enunciation. 
I think that's how you say it. Enunciation. Let's look it up. There it is. Okay. The stress is on the word or it could be on a sentence. Okay. Enunciation is on specific letters. How are you pronouncing the sounds of those letters? Is it the correct one? And so what we are going to practice today, what we are going to practice today is an actual conversation. And we're going to try to ensure as close to 100% pronunciation in each of those sentences. And so in order for that to happen, we, I want to make sure we understand what pronunciation is. Okay. So pronunciation needs three key elements. The first one is the rhythm. La musiquita, el beat. The intonation, los altos y los bajos, the intonation, right? And then the stress on the words that you select. Those are extremely important. And that's why I think we covered them like two or three times during this model. Well, dur during this module. Very, very important. So, yeah. the rhythm. The rhythm is the speed and the cadence of how you say a sentence. La velocidad. Y el cantadito de cómo se dice una sentence. So, some beginner students might say each word in a sentence at the same speed and sound, but that makes you sound like a robot, which is not the best thing. Developing different speeds and knowing when to slow down and speed up can give you the spoken English that you might need depending on what you want to do if you're telling stories oh my goodness right you're gonna have to keep up with those beats and those sentences and the cadence and not too fast not too slow but you have to you have to remember that in some places you're gonna have to speed up a little bit second portion is the intonation this is the music of the language Often questions can be asked with the rise in intonation where the pitch goes up. This might be genuine question to which you don't know the answer. John's still on holiday is an example. Now, that is said with a rising pitch, which means a question, which needs answering. If it's said without a rising intonation, it's information. You know, John's still on holiday that you already know and you might just need confirmation. Intonation can also show emotions, like surprise, you know? Surprise, have a good And then we finish it off with stress. This is saying a syllable or part of a word more strongly and can be at a word level. Like record is the noun for an athletics world record, perhaps, while Record is what you do to a song when you copy it onto your MP3 or MP4 player. Puchica, un poquito veterano, record it to a CD. No, lo hubiera puesto un tape. All right. <laughs> stress is also important at sentence level where the meaning can be changed depending on which whole word you stress. We did an exercise for this one with I love you. Do you guys remember that? Yeah. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to work on our rhythm. We're going to work on, on the intonation and we're going to work on stress. Now, all of this that I'm talking about, right? There's an added item that we will try to incorporate later on when the sentences get really tricky and when the conversations get really fluent. And so you actually have to combine the stressing with the linking in order to make it work properly. Okay? So I want you guys to keep this in mind because we will see it in the future. And 
literally what linking is, is that when you are saying something, you want to say it in a way where some of the words interlap with the other words to make it sound fluent, you know? This is the speed and the cadence of how you say a sentence. And so it sounds like you're going really fast and it sounds like maybe one word gets interlocked with another one. That's exactly what it is, all right? So let's begin by talking about stresses, okay? In this particular case, we're gonna work on a sentence stress and we're gonna stress a word, okay? And so I'm gonna start off and I'm gonna run a couple of these. And I want you guys to know that the word that I'm stressing is in bold, big, black, bold letters. And so in order for you guys to, to, to hear me okay, I'm gonna raise my voice a little bit, okay? When it's bold. So microphone check, I headset check para que no les vaya a arruinar sus, sus oíditos, okay? All right. All right, here we go, here we go. I thought your brother was a bus conductor. 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 All right, all right. Hopefully I, hopefully I did it right. Hopefully the yelling helped a little bit there. So in the first sentence, what am I trying to say with screaming the I? I thought your brother was a bus conductor. Joe, nobody else, me. The most important portion of this sentence is who? Yeah, you. Me. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Forget about every, everything else. Forget about the conductor. Forget about the bus. Forget about the brother. The most important thing is here is me. I thought your brother was a bus conductor. Well, you were wrong, sir. Right, that's what you would, that's what you would answer. Okay, the next one. I thought your brother was a bus conductor. Who are we talking about? Or what's the meaning of this sentence? The word, the word thought. Yo pensé. Ah, pues no pensé así, compadre, right? I thought. So when you put the extra emphasis, the meaning of the whole sentence changes. I is the most important. En la número dos, el pensar, el pensamiento is the most important. How about number three? I thought your brother was a bus conductor. I thought your brother. What are we talking about here? We're talking about and the most important portion of this sentence is el hermano o su hermano. Bueno, en este caso solo sería su. El hermano de quién? El hermano de él. That's the most important. Next one. I thought your brother was a bus conductor. Emphasis en el Yo pensé que tu hermano era el conductor. Bueno, no era mi hermana. ¿no? That's why it tells you here, not the sister. It was the brother. brother was. I have a brother. I have a sister. In this case, I thought it was your brother, but no, it was my sister. So the meaning of the same word ha cambiado porque ahora el emphasis es, ahí sí, mm -hmm. el hermano. The brother. I thought your brother was a bus conductor. Yo no sabía. 
No sé. ¿Es he still a bus conductor? No, ya no, perdió el trabajo. COVID-19. Ah, lo echaron. Okay. I thought your brother was a bus conductor. ¿Qué manejaba? Porque no era un conductor de una orquesta. No, no, no. He didn't, he didn't, ¿cómo se dice? He didn't conduct an orchestra. He was a bus conductor. He was a bus driver. Okay. I thought your brother was a bus conductor. Aquí sí. No, 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 no. no. Once again. Bus and conductor. ¿Qué es lo que hacía? Okay. So whenever you guys read out a sentence, what is the message that you guys are trying to give? And if the message has to do with, for example, saying to somebody, so let's say, let's say you tell somebody, I'm sorry to hear that. Same thing happened. Depending where you put the emphasis, they will understand differently. Si vos comenzas tu sentence with I y le pones emphasis en I, entonces that means que yo, I feel sorry. I am sorry for your loss. ¿Verdad? But if that changes to any other word, entonces ya cambia ese meaning. Y lo que tú estás tratando de decir, también. Así es que, ojo, esta porción de aquí se llama siempre pronunciation. However, this one here is sentence stress. Correct sentence stress. Everybody okay so far? Everybody good? Yes. Excellent, excellent. Okay, so let's talk about the rhythm that we're looking for. Okay. So I want you guys to think, and people will tell you this. People will tell you, for example, if they're giving you feedback, si te están dando retroalimentación, y esa retroalimentación es para mejorar, te van a decir que fallaste your rhythm on your sentences, or your rhythm structure está un poquito off. ¿Qué es lo que significa eso? Oh, mm. ¿Qué quiere que haga? Que tire mi rap. Para que me escuche el rhythm. Well, yes, that's what we want to hear. We want to hear your flow. Quiero que te escuche como que si está rapeando, right? So I want you guys to keep that in mind when you guys hear this, when you guys hear pronunciation, when you guys hear rhythm, when you guys hear what we're about to do, I want you to keep in mind that this is what we want you to do. So how does it work? Well, what happens is that there is alternates between stressed and unstressed syllables and it happens in regular form and so the fact that you stress a portion and you don't stress another portion is something that you have to keep repeating in a sentence and how does it work? Well, it creates kind of like a little beat to what you guys are saying. How do we implement it? Well, there are specific words that we use. There are content words and there are function words. Have you guys ever heard of these terms before? Content words and function words. Yeah. See? Okay. All right. So... I can put this particular sentence here and I can use the content words and you guys could probably understand what I'm trying to say. So for example, if I say bot car Tuesday, solo esas tres palabras, bot car Tuesday. ¿Qué entienden ustedes? What do you guys understand? What do you guys think I possibly mean? Bot car Tuesday. What do you guys think I'm trying to say?
Si solo escuchan las tres palabras, bought car Tuesday. Compré carro martes. Compré carro martes. Like if I just call you and I say, hey, hey, Alex, man, bought car Tuesday. Yeah. What do you what do you think I'm trying to tell you? There's not much sense in it. Though. There, there's something missing, right? Right. So you know you know something happened, pero todavía quedan así como preguntitas. ¿Quién compró? ¿Qué, qué pasó? Ah, right. So you start asking questions because there's things that are missing. So we need the function word. I a on. And so now when you put these together, I bought a car on Tuesday. ¿Cuál es el mensaje que les acabo de dar? Que compré un carro. Compré un carro. Compré un carro. That's it. Savior. I bought a car, man. When did I buy it? Ya te dije. When did I buy it? Tuesday. What did I buy? A car. What did I do on Tuesday? I bought it. Huh? So, Where do we put our rhythm? Where do we put our beat? Okay. I bought a car on Tuesday. Y aquí, si ustedes pueden observar, the correct stress on the most important word. Huh? I bought a car on Tuesday. E, the little dots. I want you guys to look at the little dots. I have a little dot, big dot, 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 big dot, big dot. And there's your rhythm. This, ladies and gentlemen, is correct rhythm. And if you guys can get this, you will sound Fluent. Fluency at 100%, at the biggest level. But you also have to remember the stress on the words. Because if you don't do the stress on the word, todo este trabajo que tú has hecho might go downhill. Because somebody will come back to this word and he will say, what? What, what did you say? What did you mean by that word? So you guys have to be careful with that one. Okay. So far. Rhythm, it's, it's a beat, it's a cadence, right? It's a flow that we're following. What is the flow? Little dot, big dot, little dot, big dot, little dot, big dot, little dot, little dot, big dot, okay? I bought a car on Tuesday. Now, I'm, be, I'm, I'm exaggerating a little bit. Right, you're not gonna do that in an actual sentence. You're gonna you're gonna sound kind of weird, but I want you guys to think about the words "bought," "car," and "Tuesday." I bought a car on Tuesday. That's normal. What did you do, teacher? What did you do last weekend? Well, well I'm sorry. It should be what, teacher? What did you do last week? Oh my goodness. Well, I bought a car on Tuesday. Did you guys? Can you guys hear the bot car Tuesday and how it goes up in volume a little bit? The flow, yeah. You gotta, you gotta have a flow. Now, I wanna keep going with this flow. <laughs> There are a few ways that you guys can use the rhythm, okay? Number one you can change the pitch a little bit on the stress syllables. Hmm? You can stress the syllable with a longer period than normal. So you can make it a little bit longer. Or you can increase the, the volume, which is what I do. I increase the volume, okay? But these are three different ways that you can do it. You can change the pitch, increase or stress the pitch. You can make it a little bit longer or you can make it a little bit louder. 
Pero, I want you guys to remember, it's still little dot, big dot, little dot, big dot, little dot, little dot, big dot. Así, chiquitito, chiquitito, grande. Chiquitito, grande, chiquitito, grande, chiquitito, grande, chiquitito, chiquitito, grande. That's, that's what we're following. So, I took a bus to the park. Took bus and park. I took a bus to the 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 park. Can you guys hear the flow? I took a bus to the park. I took a bus to the park. You can even make it a song, man. I'm going to start rapping pretty soon, you guys. Okay. How are we doing so far? Three ways to use the stress. The first one, you can change the pitch. Second one, you can make the words or stress the syllable for a longer period of time. In other words, make the sound a little bit longer. And third, you can increase the volume of your voice when you are about to say that, right? You're gonna say park, say park and scream it out, right? Increasing the volume. Okay. Now, next one. Think of it like this. This is our practice, right? Little dot, big dot, little dot, big dot, little, little, big, little. I'll build a fire in the fireplace. 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 Next one. Josh, oh, this one started big. Josh is reading a newspaper article. Josh is reading a newspaper article. Josh is reading a newspaper article. Big dot, little dot, big dot, little, little, big, little, little, big, little, little. You guys, you guys see the rhythm that we started? Josh is reading a newspaper article. Josh is reading a newspaper article. Josh is reading a newspaper article. I'll build a fire in the fireplace. I'll build a fire in the fireplace. Okay. All right. So the rhythm that we are following is more of a guideline. I don't want you guys to take it and say, this is the way it has to be all the time. Because depending on where you are from in the United States, you might have a different rhythm. So be careful with that. It's a guideline, not a rule. Is everybody okay so far? All right. Okay. Yeah. All right, so since we discussed some of these words, uh, we were talking about content words and we were talking about function words. Let me tell you about what are what. What is which? Content words. Content words could be nouns, main verb, adjectives, adverbs, except adverbs of frequency, and negatives. These are all the categories. And so what is the description, right? So a noun, people, places, things, and ideas, verbs without auxiliaries, words that describe nouns, words that describe verbs, and then words that negate negatives. What are some examples? Patty, Seattle, cars, happiness. Ran, swims, thinking. Red, soft, careful. Calmly, quickly, carefully. Not, never. These would be content words. And so what are function words? 
These are auxiliary verbs, prepositions, conjunctions, determiners, or pronouns. And auxiliary verbs are a form of words to be or to have, or models are also in here. Words that tell a relation to other words, words that tie clauses together, words that give detail to nouns, words that replace nouns. So some examples. Auxiliary verbs are, was, has, could, should. Prepositions, at, on, to, near. Conjunctions, and, so, but, however. Some determiners, a, and, the, some, any, and then pronouns. I, it, we, they, he, and she. Okay, that is pretty much it with the rhythm. Would anybody like to volunteer to read a quick, well, actually, you know what? You know what, let's leave that one for after this one. Hold on, hold on. But I want you guys to prepare. If you guys want to volunteer for the, for the role play, this is it. This is the one that we're going to do. Okay, and so I want to talk to you guys about the intonation. Intonation really is very, it's pretty much stressing and linking put together. And this is something that I was, that, that we were talking about. Intonation has to do with how we say things. Are we either uh, rising with the intonation or are we falling with the intonation is our intonation going up is it rising or is it falling and there are sentences where you need to include both you need to include rising intonation and you need to include falling intonation so what is intonation and how do we use it well Whenever you guys are having a conversation, that conversation has to go up and down depending on what you're talking about. So let me go ahead and make this one a little bit bigger. Hopefully you guys can see it. And let's focus on the falling intonation. So when we talk about intonation, there's three. You can say three rules. It's either falling, rising, or both, falling and rising. So three categories, I would say. When something is falling, you start high and you drop the volume, literally. Nice to meet you. So you start high, nice to meet you, and then you lower your volume. Nice to meet you. I'll be back in a minute. She doesn't live here. Dad wants to change his and then drops to car, drops to minute, drops to any more. Here is the weather forecast and then it drops, okay? When do we use it to rise? Well, if you have a yes, no question, do you like your new teacher? Do you like your new English teacher? No. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> oh, my goodness. That's it. No. Class is over. We're going home. I want to go eat my turkey. That's it. I had enough. All right. Have you finished already? Have you finished? And then you jump. Already. Have you finished already? May I borrow your dictionary? and it increases. There's the cases where you're going to have to rise and fall. You're gonna to have to use rise and fall in one sentence. So for example, when you're giving choices, what are you having? Soup or salad? Soup is high, salad is low. If you guys are doing a list, the first item on the list is high, then you hold for the middle, 
and the last item, it drops. For example, what did you get from the market? Well, I got apples, pears, bananas, and oranges. And then oranges dropped. Is everybody okay with the intonation? Rising, falling, and then both. Rising and falling. Okay. Now, let's go ahead and go over there. All right, now we can do this one. Okay, who would like to practice reading it first? And then once we read it, we do a quick little role play. Um, we have a principal, and then we have Helen, and then we have Bernie. I volunteer for the principal. No, I want to be the principal. You want to be the principal? <laughs> All right, we can do yes. it, we can do it. Okay, you can, you can be the principal. Okay. All right. Okay. Who wants to be Helen? Me. All right. Yeah, I heard Gretel. Uh, me. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Who wants to be Bernie? I want. All right. We got it. So we got we got principal. We got Helen, and we have Bernie. Now, I want to be Dash. <laughs> look at look at Dash. He only has one line in all this. Let's see if it brings, let's see if you guys have seen this movie before. This is a portion of a movie. Okay. Mm. So just read it in your normal voice. Principal will start it off. And then once principal goes to the end, Helen takes over, then Bernie, and then Dash. I see. Principal, Helen, Bernie, Dash. And it's just reading it. Just read it como tú quieras. Estamos? Okay. Everybody ready? Okay. All right. Yes. All right. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's go. Three, two, one, go. Okay. I appreciate you coming down here, Mr. Parr. What is this about? Has Dash done something wrong? He's a derogative influence and he openly mocks what me in front of the class. He says. Look, I know it's you. He put some tags on my soul. You saw him do this. Well, no, really. No, actually, no. Oh, then how do you know it was him? <laughs> I, I hit a camera. Yeah, and this time I got him. All right, all right, all right. We got it, we got it. Who, who, who... Who has identified where this is from? <laughs> from what movie? Todavía no. 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 All right. All right. All right. We're gonna we're gonna do it. We're gonna do it. Right. Okay. So next one. Okay. So this is what I want you guys to do next. We're gonna read it again. But this time, you guys see the words or the letters that are highlighted in black. Okay. I, I want you to increase your volume when you guys come to these when when you guys come to the bold letters increase okay. the volume increase the volume increase the volume so just to make sure that we're we're okay i want you to help me in in this one so uh the principal who who's going for the principal i want you to repeat after me appreciate Appreciate. There, you got it. You got it. Appreciate. Okay, you got it. Okay. Next okay. one. This one here, whenever you guys see the M, the R, the R or the S, mm -hmm. se pronuncia como Mrs. 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 Eso, eso. And okay. then here is car. Car. Okay, you got it. Va. Let's start off. Principal. Va. Tres. Dos, uno, acuérdense, volumen, guys, volumen. Go. I appreciate you coming down here, Mrs. Mr. Spark. <laughs> what? No. What is this about? Has Dash done something wrong? He's a disruptive influence, 
and he opened and mocks me in front of the class. He says, Look, I know it is you. He puts some tags on my soul. You saw him do this? Well, no, really, no, actually, no. Oh, then how do you know it was him? I hit a camera. Yeah, and this time I got him. All right, all right, okay. We're getting better, we're getting better. So, one of, one of the reasons for us that speak Spanish, it's, it's a little bit hard, is because in Spanish, we don't, we don't see any of this stuff, right? There is no music, right? There's no way of changing that. So <laughs> when we come into English, that's where, you know, we have to kind of work it a little bit more. And, and, and we have to develop that little singing, that little voice, that little beat, the little rap like that we were talking about. All right. So we were talking about the principle. So now I'm going to go with Helen. Helen, you have to start off. I want you guys to, to look at the story, right? The principal of the school. That means that the principal called Helen, which is the mom. And so the mom had to take a day off to go to the principal. So she's not in a good mood. So aquí, ese volumen tiene que ser un poquito más. Alto. What? What's this about? Porque, porque I'm, I'm a little bit upset. What's, what's this about? Has Dash, that's my little kid, done something wrong? And then so it has to have a little bit more. Está un poquito molesta. So you guys got to remember that. We took her out of her work or her house. All right? All right, Helen. All right, principal. Vamos, una vez más. Three, two, one, go. I appreciate, oh, only Helen. <laughs> no, no, todos, everybody, everybody, let's go. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> um, I appreciate you coming down, Mr. Sp I, teacher. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Parr. Uh, uh, Mrs. Yeah, Mrs. Mrs. Parr. Mrs. Mrs. Parr. Oh, you got it. Thank you. <laughs> See you. Sí, sí. Yes, Helen. Go. <laughs> Go, Helen. <laughs> Go, Helen. <laughs> okay. What this about? Has Dash done something wrong? Oh, you got it. You nailed it. Okay. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Bernie. Ah, oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> he said this word is in French, and he openly mocks, mocks me in front of their class. He says, uh, look, I know it's you. He put some tax on my stove. Helen. Helen. <laughs> <laughs> you saw him do this? Well, not really. No, actually no. Oh, then how do you know it was him? I hit a camera. Yeah, and this time I go him. All right, all right, well done, well done. Okay, so, Bernie, Bernie. Yeah? When you start off, you got, repeat after me, Bernie. Disruptive, disruptive. Disruptive. Y ahora, influence. Influence. And he openly. And he openly. Mox. Mox. Me in front. Me in front. Of the class. Of the class. All right. So, mock es muy importante. Front in class. Porque lo que está haciendo él es deliberadamente se está burlando de él en frente de la clase. And then, so, <laughs> Bernie is actually very angry. Bernie, when, when they walk in here, he's screaming. He's a disruptive influence and he openly mocks me in front of the class. And then El Dash le contesta. He says, Look, I know it's you. He puts thumbtacks on my stool. Well, not really. No, 
actually not. I hit a camera. Yeah. And this time, I've got him. All right. So, Bernie, I want you to put that little, because you're angry. You're angry, Bernie. <laughs> Te está poniendo una tachuela every time you sit down. Aquí está. Thumb tax. Teacher. Yes. It's the Incredibles movie, right? It is. The, you got it. Yeah. <laughs> this is it. This is the one. All right. So, let's do it one last time. Let's do it one last time. Okay. A ver, con todo. Okay, remember, remember the words that we're working on. Appreciate. Okay. Mrs. Parr. And right? Mrs. Parr, that's correct. Uh, Mrs. For, Parr. For Helen, creo que Helen, we had the right. Uh, remember, you're angry. Bernie. Yes. Disruptive. <laughs> disruptive. Disruptive. Disruptive influence. So... So, Bernie, for you it's a little bit harder porque this is an example of linking. Y lo que hacen es ponen disruptive y lo meten ahí donde está influence. So, when you say it, it has to sound like this. He's a disruptive influence. Okay. Se escucha como que si es one big sentence. All right? All right. All right. Here we go, guys. Here we go. Tres, dos, uno, go. I appreciate you coming down here, Mrs. Parr. What this about? Has Dash done something wrong? He's a district influence and he openly mocks me in front of the class. He says. Yo <laughs> celebrando. <laughs> he says. He says. Look. Look. I know this you. He puts some tax on my soul. You saw him do this? Uh, well, no, really. No, actually, no. Oh, then how do you know it was him? I hit, I hit, uh, I hit, uh, sorry, I forgot that. <laughs> hit, hit. I hit a camera, yeah, and this time I got him. There we go. This time I got him. Okay, so, <laughs> so here's the deal with these, right? The more we practice, the more we get in tune with this little beat. And, and I don't know if you guys have heard that when there is, uh, for example, somebody that comes from the States, right? If you are accustomed to talking in English with somebody from here in El Salvador, this, uh, the, the, the rhythm, the flow, the beat is a little bit different than somebody coming from the States. Now, what happens is that their pronunciation and in enunciation is really, really high in the United States. So when they come down here, you can really hear the words because they're so accustomed to them, you know? And so when you hear them say, I appreciate you coming down here, Mrs. Parr, like you can't even tell that they might have maybe like a little, like a little bit of a, uh, I want to say accent because in the United States, there's also different accents. There's accents from people from California. There's accents from people from that are from Texas. There's accents from people that are from Mississippi and they all say these words a little bit different. So I want you guys to also keep that in mind. The, the target is not for you guys to sound absolutely 100% right now. The idea is for you guys to start to get used to that rhythm, to start to get used to that beat and try to keep in mind that what you're doing is you're actually telling a little story. And so whenever you guys are telling a story, if you guys are going to sound mad, tienen que poner la voz de enojada. If you guys are going to sound happy, tienen que poner su voz de, 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 de I'm, I'm happy. <laughs> So it, th that's the way the story goes. So let me try to see if I can if I can read this one through. I think I have enough time. Oh, dang, we didn't do the. Let me see if we have. I think we have. Did I have? I did. I did. I did. I had something for you guys. Well, it was the story, and I also had a pronunciation. You know, we can do pronunciation on Monday and incorporate it to Monday. Okay, so let, let's, yeah, let's do it like that. Look, this is the exercise that I had for you guys. Or do you guys want to do the exercises? I'm going to leave it up to you. 
two minutes left anyway. What, what do you guys want to do? Do you guys want to do the quick practice or do you guys want to hear me read poetry? <laughs> You guys are the bosses today. Well, actually, you guys are the bosses every day. <laughs> well, yeah, it doesn't matter. All yes. right, so you know what? Let's leave this one for, for Monday then, and then let's read this one through. Okay? I really, wanna, I really want for us to work on this rhythm stuff. Okay. All right. Uh, I need, since there is four... Uh, can somebody tell me, can somebody help me? I need a volunteer to help me just read through it. That can do the little bold letters. Who wants, who wants to participate? Two minutes. I don't think it'll take longer than two minutes. What or do we have to do? <laughs> just read, just read. Same thing. We just read. Uh, okay. Me teacher. All right. So this is what you're going to do. You're going to have principal and dash so just remember principal and dash okay. and i'm going to be helen and bernie okay okay well no because it, it, i want to i want to have a conversation with you <laughs> so let, let's do something let's leave dash quien quiere hacer dash super fácil miren super fácil who wants Can to I do nine again me who, who said me? Who said me? Gretel, I thought. Yes, I would like to try over again. Gret Gretel, you want to be Dash? Or who yeah. do you want to be? Yeah, okay. I'll tell you what, Gretel. You can be Dash and you can be the principal. And then I'm going to be Helen. Uh, no, um, I think, I think Karina. No, who? Who wanted to participate at the very beginning? And me, teacher. <laughs> Is that Mariana? Okay, okay. Yes. So, so, a ver, Mari. Mari, you're going to be Helen, and I'm going to be Bernie. And then Gretel, okay. Gretel is going to be the principal and Dash. Gretel, you got that? Okay. All right, yeah. all right. <laughs> I know you haven't practiced it, and it's okay, Gretel. Don't worry about it. Okay. All right, so here we go. Gretel, tres, dos, uno. Mm. I appreciate you coming down here, Mrs. Park. What's this What's about? What's this about? Oh, I'm sorry, I'm oh. sorry. Like, perdón, perdón, perdón. <laughs> let's, let's go back. I thought it like, you're okay. I'm sorry. Don't I'm worry. Burning. I'm burning. I'm burning. Let's go. I'm sorry, Gretel. You did a great job. Let's do it again. Three, <laughs> two, sure. uno. I appreciate you coming down here, Mrs. Park. What's this about? Has Dash done something wrong? He's a disruptive influence and he openly mocks me in front of the class. He says, Look, I know it's you. He puts thumbtacks on my stool. You saw him do this? Well, not really. No, actually not. Oh, then... How do you know it was him? I hit a camera. Yeah. And this time, <laughs> I've got him. All right. Good. Good. There we go. So, I know that you guys are probably thinking, but teacher, it sounded the same. It sounded the same from when we read it the first time. Yes. And then it sounded the same when we read it again using the boldness. So now, this is what I'm going to ask you guys to do. All of these classes are recorded in YouTube and you guys can go in and you guys can watch them. And mm. I want you guys to hear yourselves. And you guys are going to hear how it goes from, I appreciate you coming down oh here. Oh my God. Park, and it's going to sound <laughs> like, I appreciate you coming down here, Mrs. Park, because these are the ones that you need to stress. Especially when I can hear the difference in the word appreciate, okay. but not in what's or and wrong. Really? But you will. I only hear it's more loud, the voice, but 
and that's it. That's what we're looking for. Okay. <laughs> because these are important words, right? All right. So let me go ahead and let me go ahead and ensure that you guys can get there. Please, please remember that on Monday we're going to keep practicing pronunciation, and we're going to have this one set up for you guys. So have a fantastic weekend, and it was a pleasure having you guys here today. Thank you very much, and have a very good night. See you guys. Bye, teacher. Thank, Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.